Hello, my name's Tony. What I'm trying to do is to create a series of videos that might help you uh, when you're creating assets for your routes and scenarios uh, in Train Simulator. Now, the reason behind this is that when I wanted to import models into the game, uh, I found very little information on what formats I should use and how to go about it. Now, I'm no way an expert, so don't uh, uh, please don't run away with that idea. And in fact, these tutorials will hopefully be a way I can uh, use the, my newly gained skill on uh, creating uh, various things to and pass it on to you. Uh, so, yeah, at the start here, we'll, you, we'll do something uh, quite basic. But um, the, when I come to um, creating these assets, uh, I, I searched around and around until I found this YouTube channel. And here, uh, Game Foodie, here uh, there was a tutorial on how to uh, map uh, textures onto a cube, but more importantly, how to then get that cube into Train Simulator. Uh, and also was a series of links to sites that contained little add-on programs that actually made it possible to do that because natively Blender doesn't output the right format that Train Simulator recognises. So uh, these links uh, were uh, very very useful uh, first of these is, is Railworks Austria uh, and there's a, a little program here called RW Ace Tool now this will convert image files the texture files you use in Blender it will convert them to a format that Train Simulator will understand and that is the ACE uh, format so it's a really useful little program drag and drop easy to use um, now the the other big thing was how, what format to export from blender uh, and uh, in fact I'm reading information uh, it turns out it was IGS now IGS I think is a native uh, format for um, 3d studio max um, but it's not native to Blender. So uh, luckily there's a reference to uh, a site, the original site being DOM107, who produce a Python script uh, to help do this, to help output from Blender into an IGS format. Um, and then uh, this, uh, this site here, Juju49, has gone on to produce an add-on uh, that you can simply uh, uh, import into Blender, uh, and that will handle pretty much it, the process automatically uh, for you, uh, and it will output that IGS uh, format. So, absolutely great, uh, great uh, <laughs> sites to uh, find these were. Uh, last one was this one here, which was Dovetail Games' um, own. Uh, website uh, I'm not sure if I got got to it from their website or not or whether it was just for a Google search but it is the train simulator developer documentation and there is a whole load of uh, information here uh, some's easier to understand than others than other bits uh, of it but it, it gives you lots of information on how to create certain things uh, right down to the makeup of the folders and how to structure uh, your folders and f uh, file names, how uh, what to uh, call uh, various uh, files um, insofar as knowing when they're imported, what level of detail they might be. Now, level of detail is very important in uh, a three D game you don't want this highly detailed model um, to be seen 200 yards away or, or 300 yards away because you won't see the detail on it. So uh, what normally happens in the 3D world is that the detail uh, gets less as, as the model is further away. So when you actually produce a model, you produce more than one model. 
So you'll produce your really detailed model for close-up viewing in the game, but then you'll produce less detailed models. Um, uh, and you might produce four or five uh, models of varying detail. Uh, and it's called level of detail. And the naming conventions are important because they're interpreted by the game as to uh, you know what uh, LOD as they call it what LOD is so it's all explained in uh, in this website here so you do want to stick to the conventions it talks about